Welcome to Read Along with the PFBC. You can listen and or read along with Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission staff as they share Pennsylvania League of Angling Youth newsletters in a video format. Let's get started. Pennsylvania League of Angling Youth Fall 2013 PFBC Then and Now by Chad Foster and Ellen Schreffler Edited by Spring Gearhart Design and Illustrations by Jeff Decker and Ted Walk Photos by Jeff Decker W.C.O. Thomas Edwards Spring Gerhardt Art Michaels and the PFBC Archives Read by Miranda Smith During William Penn's time, Pennsylvania was mostly forest. Fish were abundant in streams and rivers. Early settlers changed this by clear-cutting mountains over-harvesting fish, and coal mining. These activities helped America grow, but were also harmful to fish and fish habitat. The first commissioner of fisheries was appointed in 1866 in response to these problems. The Commission of Fisheries is now the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission or PFBC. Many things have changed over time, but the work continues. This issue of play looks at some of PFBC's history and current activities. Resource first. The mission of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission is to protect, conserve, and enhance the Commonwealth's aquatic resources and provide fishing and boating opportunities. Photo captions. In 1892, railroad cars were used to transport fish to distant stocking locations. Netting fish along the Susquehanna River circa 1900. American Shad the PFBC's founding fish. American shad were a valuable resource of food to the European settlers of the colonies. Because shad are anadromous, they migrated up the Susquehanna and Delaware rivers to spawn. Spawning shad were harvested in Pennsylvania and provided food to a growing nation. As the population grew, water pollution increased. Dams built on the Susquehanna River for power or for canals blocked shad migrations. Water quality was also poor on the Susquehanna River due to erosion and coal mining activities. Due to water pollution, shad were kept from migrating up the Delaware River. All of these factors led to decreased populations of American shad and other fish. After the Civil War, meetings were held to discuss pollution and the declining fish populations. In 1866, Governor Andrew G. Curtin appointed Colonel James Warall as Pennsylvania's first Commissioner of Fisheries. Colonel Worrell's job was to investigate these problems and take steps to restore shad. Today, PFBC is still working to restore American shad and other migratory fish. Anadromous Fish that migrate from salt water into fresh water to spawn. Photo caption, Susquehanna Flats, Maryland, 1900. Visit www 
dot fish and boat dot com for more information on American Shad Restoration. John McPhee's book, Founding Fish, tells the story of shad in early American history. Historical Hatcheries Fish hatcheries were built early in the Commission's history and were used to grow American shad, black bass, trout, and even frogs. There are now 14 hatcheries in Pennsylvania. Some of the earliest hatcheries are still in operation today. Four of them are over 100 years old. These facilities have produced millions of fish for Commonwealth anglers. The Cory State Fish Hatchery is the oldest hatchery still operating and was built in 1876. In 1886, the first brown trout eggs from Germany were raised and stocked by the staff at Cory State Fish Hatchery. The Pleasant Mount State Fish Hatchery opened in 1903. The first chain pickerel propagated in the United States was from the Pleasant Mount State Fish Hatchery. Pleasant Mount State Fish Hatchery continues to raise pike, pickerel, walleyes, catfish, muscalunge, and black bass. The Pleasant Gap State Fish Hatchery near Belfont was opened in 1903. It was built next to train tracks so fish could be hauled by boxcar. Black bass, also known as largemouth bass and smallmouth bass. Lake Erie Fish Research and Patrol by Boat. Then, Lake Erie has 735 square miles of water within Pennsylvania's boundaries. Researching fish populations and enforcing the laws have always been tough. From 1866 to 1907, PFBC did not have a boat that could effectively patrol or study the lake. Then, the commission designed and built a tugboat in 1908 named the Commodore Perry. The Commodore Perry provided the law enforcement that the lake needed. Illegal fishing activities were almost stopped within a year of patrolling the lake. The Commodore Perry was also used by fisheries biologists to collect fish and sample areas of the lake that were not previously possible to sample. The boat provided many services to Lake Erie, and that tradition is continued today using more modern vessels. Photo caption. The Commodore Perry was 43 gross tons, 62 feet long, and 15.7 feet wide, with a depth of 6.7 feet. Photo captions. The Commodore Perry was 43 gross tons, 62 feet long, and 15.7 feet wide, with a depth of 6.7 feet. The engine could generate 80 horsepower and obtain a top speed of over 12 miles per hour. Fishing Boats at Erie Jeremiah R. Durskull, Captain of the Commodore Perry. Lake Erie Fish Research and Patrol by Boat. Now. Today, PFBC uses a combination of boats to patrol and research Lake Erie. Law enforcement patrols Lake Erie with several boats and up to nine officers. Waterways Conservation Officers, or WCOs, look for a wide range of fishing and boating violations. 
Officers do a great job of protecting the Lake Erie fishery for future generations. PFBC fisheries biologists now use a Lake Erie research boat called the Perka. The biologists conduct fish population surveys to study the lake. Lake Erie is known worldwide as one of the best freshwater fisheries in the world. This is due to great management by dedicated biologists and WCOs. Even though a lot has changed over the past hundred years, PFBC continues the tradition of studying and stocking our lakes and streams to meet the growing needs of anglers and boaters throughout Pennsylvania. Photo Captions Boats docked at Presque Isle, Erie County. The Perka, a research boat used by PFBC fisheries biologists on Lake Erie. PFBC fisheries biologists conduct fish population surveys to study the lake. WCOs do a great job of protecting Pennsylvania's fisheries for future generations. Stocking Trout in Pennsylvania. The times have changed. When stocking first began, the only way to transport fish from the hatcheries was with a horse and buggy. This method worked great for short distances but it was impossible to stock streams more than a few miles away. In the 1800s, a huge event took place for everybody in the nation, the railroad. Just as the railroad had replaced horses, trucks replaced railroads. Photo caption, moving trout for stocking from the hatch house, Pleasant Gap State Fish Hatchery, circa 1920. Stocking then and now. Method of transportation then. Milk cans in rail cars or horse-drawn wagons. Now, stocking trucks. Control water temperature. Then, adding ice. Now, White truck with insulated tanks reflects heat and keeps water cool inside. Circulate water and maintain oxygen levels. Then, done by hand, using a ladle to stir. Change water if available. Now, oxygen tanks or aerators pump into each fish compartment. Powered pumps circulate the water. Number of fish transported. Then, a few hundred fry and fingerling sized trout in each can. Now, a maximum of 3,500 10 inch trout per truck. PA State Fish Hatcheries Word Search. Find the state fish hatcheries from the list below in the word search. Hatchery. Quarry. Built. 1876. Pleasant Mount. Built. 1903. Pleasant Gap. Built. 1903. Union City. Built. 1905. Reynoldsdale, built 1925. Tyanesta, built 1929. Huntsdale, built 1932. Belfont, built 1933. Linesville, built 1939. Benner Spring, built 1951. Oswego, built 1968. Fairview, built 1975.
Tylersville, built 1983. Van Dyke, built 1976. For more read-along with the PFBC, please visit our website, www.fishandboat.com.